This is an early 16th century stone bow or pellet bow. Uh, we don't know exactly the origins of the pellet bow, this sort of design, but we believe it was China, maybe 13th, 14th century, and then shipped through the trade routes or by boat back to England as an idea, but not the weapons themselves. We made our own here. Chinese style is quite different. The Italian and the Spanish styles, much more carved, much more ostentatious as well. But the, the English was often the case, the English and the Flemish type styles, a little plainer, um, more workaday type objects. And that's what I've tried to replicate here. So gone to town a little bit on the metalwork. They did like fancy metalwork. They were fairly high status objects. They'd even demonstrate that by using screws, which you might think is a very modern thing, but actually they could make screws and use them. They were just expensive. So when they needed to, they did. So, starting at the, uh, the rather curious double string, it doesn't shoot arrows, this. It shoots pellets or lead shot, not stone, actually. So the name is a misnomer. So basically, you can roll clay ball, shoots those very nicely, very cheap. Lead shot, more expensive, but they pack more of a punch. So with the, the double string here, you have these two pillars that keep it separate. But then on the back here, you've got a rather strange setup. But what that allows it to do is you pull the string back and hook it onto the trigger mechanism, the pocket closes. And by closing, it pinches the ball. So it pinches it like that. But the moment you release the trigger, the strings open wide again, and it pushes the ball cleanly through. So it doesn't hold it, it just drives it. Now, starting at the front of the bow, you've got this element here, this spike. It looks very offensive or possibly defensive. It's neither of those, actually. It's to do with the loading process, and I'll come to that in a minute. Then behind that, you have these two pillars here. Now, these have a cord attached to them with a little knot in the cord. That knot is your foresight. So it allows you uh, elevation. It allows you windage by moving it one side to the other, um, which, of course, later guns and rifles and so forth didn't have that. They had a fixed foresight. Then behind that, you have the bow, clamped in by bow irons, wedges at the bottom. So although it's a different setup to most crossbows, it's a fairly normal kind of arrangement. Coming back, cherry wood stock, linen string, boxwood pillars, very often of ivory or, or ebony, something expensive, because these were often quite showy items. Uh, then coming back here, you have this scoop out to allow clearance for the string. And indeed the bow itself is set vertically, uh, unlike a crossbow, which would be done at an angle. Um, that wouldn't work for a stone bow, but it's set vertically, but the bow itself is canted up. Teeter totter lock here, so you pull the trigger and it slips off. Rear sight, you have a groove at the top, a groove at the bottom, a hole in the middle. Uh, what that allows you to do in essence is choose which of those sights you want, so you have different ranges immediately. But you can also, no windage uh, alteration, but you can also move it backwards and forwards which effectively gives you elevation on it. Nice fancy trigger, like I said, very often these quite high status items. And then coming back to a, a, a large uh, bulbous butt on the bow stock. That again is for the loading. So early 16th century English style pellet bow, stone bow. Uh, two ways of loading it. We have the spike on the front here, which is not offensive as you would think. It's basically for digging down into the ground. Now I'm just putting it on a piece of wood here to try and stop the thing getting dirty. So the butt into your belly or into your chest and you pull back. The pocket is now closed a little bit, enough to hold the ball, not enormously securely, because if it holds it there very tight, the ball will not fly clean when it, lose, when it leaves. Bead up. So then the other way of doing it, is that you put it into your groin and you draw back and drop it on the hook. Again, it's exactly the same. Load the shot in. Draw a bead. And loose. Let's go for a third and then we'll have a look at my amazing grouping. That's it, let's go have a look.
Uh, so if we have a look at the grouping here, this is at about 15 yards. So it's a bit low, but the weapon's new to me. Could be a bit better. Again, the weapon's new to me. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's a great little thing. Perfect for birding.